but I found a new spot to film and no one has kicked this out yet so I'm gonna keep on filming because I like the lighting there's no wind and I'm really getting a kick out of this new iPhone 13 mini. The interior of the car really is pretty spacious. I've had friends that are over six feet tall and they've sat both in the front seat and the rear seats before my car seats were put in and they were actually comfortable. Not just tolerable, but comfortable. So BMW says this has the interior space of a three series, but an outside footprint of a one series. Interesting. <laughs> so when you get in, you're gonna feel that there's a lot more space than you would expect. And there's quite a few design cues that allow that to happen. As far as design is concerned, where the windshield hits the hood basically bisects the hood from the dash. So since we don't have an engine in there, that hood can be fairly short. So BMW decided to have a short hood and have the windshield bisect the hood and the dash further out. And what that does is it allows us to have a much, much deeper dash. So the material in this dash is pretty funky. And it does look pretty cool, but one thing to be aware of is in certain sunlight, not in this condition, you will see reflections of that pattern on the windshield. And so it's not going to look super clear. It's something that's not necessarily going to bother you, but it's something that you'll notice when you first get into it. In some of the YouTube videos, I see that some people complain about where this starter button is, and it's because they have to fish their finger through here and push the button. But that is not how that works. <laughs> All you got to do is go like this, you grip it, and you press the button and that's it. So one cool thing about this gear shift is not only that it gives you more space here by having it up there rather than down here, is that the order in which you see drive neutral and reverse. So this is intuitive to me, but it is the complete opposite of most vehicles. So in this vehicle, once you start the car and you want to go to drive, what you're going to do is you're going to go forward. So you're going to push that forward to go to drive and you're going to pull it back to go to reverse. So again, forward to drive, back to reverse. If you look at your gas car, your normal car, it's actually backwards. You're going to be pulling the gear shift back to go forward and you're going to put the gear shift forward to go back, which is weird. But after doing this for a while now, two and a half years, this is very intuitive. Forward is forward, back is back. It just makes sense. So you notice the glove compartment is situated up here rather than down here like most cars. And what that does is by having that up there, it gives more space here for the passenger's feet. And so this BMW i3 actually has more passenger leg space than my wife's Mazda CX-5, no joke. So again, this is uh, the glove compartment and this is one of the two hidden compartments or compartments where you can actually put stuff and not have it be exposed. And the second thing is going to be the center console armrest. And inside is very, very small. You're not gonna fit a lot of things in there. Everything else, unfortunately, including my kids' masks, are going to be exposed under the armrest and in the door panels. So nothing else is hidden or provides that clean look other than covering it here in the center console and again on the glove compartment. This dial right here is your temperature, obviously. And you'll notice that when you turn it to one tick, it goes to 62 degrees, 64, 66. So it goes by two, you can't drop down by one, which I think is actually a smart idea because would you really notice the difference between 60 degrees and 61? Probably not, but when you get to two degrees, that's a little bit more noticeable and just allows you to change the temperature a little bit quicker. Is the AC strong, even on max AC? No, it is not. It is strong now, but and you can hear it, but normally you're not going to be clicking that because you're going to be worried about your range and you're probably just going to move this guy. And compared to American vehicles, the AC is not going to be nearly as strong, but that's typical of most non-American vehicles. The AC just isn't something to be bragging about. Is this a touchscreen? No, it is not. First of all, it's too far away. Second of all, you don't want your smudgy fingerprints on there anyway. Everything's gonna be controlled by the iDrive system via this dial. Right now we're gonna go over the information displayed on this center dash above the steering wheel. And to toggle the number here, we're gonna press the button here on the left stock. And right now you're gonna see it says 60 degrees. So that is obviously the temperature. We're gonna press the button and we're gonna see the time blank, the total miles for the car the miles that you have left, and that is a combination of the gas range, which is 72 right now, and the electric range of 44. So you have those two numbers and that equals that guy. 
And then 69.5% is the percent of battery alone. And then miles per kilowatt hour. So this one's a little bit tricky. Miles per kilowatt hour, as the car is in motion, this will tell you how many miles your or how many kilowatts of hours you're gaining when you're using the brake regeneration by braking or slowing down. It'll also tell you when you're accelerating how many miles you're getting per kilowatt hour. This here is going to be your max speed limit when you're on Eco Pro mode. When I can change the mode, you'll see on EcoPro Plus, the maximum is now only 56. On the comfort mode, there's no limit shown, but this car spec is only about 90 miles per hour. Will it go higher than 90 miles per hour? Yes, it will, but it's not really recommended and that's not really what the car is really designed for. And that is it for the center dash. So I wanted to show that top left corner number in real time. So think of miles per kilowatt hour as miles per gallon. But of course, this is an electric car, so we're using kilowatt hours. If I'm accelerating hard, then you're going to see that number drop because we're not getting as many miles per kilowatt hour. However, if I go very slowly, you can see that the word says charge. So that means it's charging. The brake regeneration is active, and I'm getting back one mile per kilowatt hour. Although I'm bringing up some of the challenges of having a BMW i3, I will have a video dedicated to why you don't want one and a video about why you do want one. So you can make those decisions. But for this particular video, it is purely about the interior of the car. I do want to gear this towards people who are potentially buying it and people who are already having it. So how do you make your mirror tilt down when you're going in reverse? This is how you do it. All the way over here, on the driver's side is going to be this toggle button. And so this toggle button normally assigns whether this controls your left side mirror or your right side mirror. When it's toggled in this left position, it allows that right side mirror to tilt downwards. If I go like this, then that functionality no longer exists. And when I go in reverse, the mirror will not tilt. So this is basically a dual function button. That's something most people may not be aware about aware of and this here is the button for folding the mirrors manually. The reason I'm showing you this speaker is because this car only has two speakers. Yes, really. In the age of cars having 14, 16 speakers, the BMW i3 only has two speakers in the entire car. And you can get more if you have the Harman Kardon system, but for the standard system, you only have two speakers and they're in the door panels of the front doors. Although this car is only a four seater, we have a total of five potential cup holders. Sorry, six potential cup holders. The center console has one built in, but these optional cup holders have an option to put on the side or one in the middle or two on the side like you see here. So three plus the two in the back, that's five. And we actually have a sixth one underneath the armrest, which I use as our garbage can. If you have any accessories that are dependent on a standard headrest, you will not have the option with this style. Let me show you what's on the inside of this door. A seat belt. Yes, a seat belt. That means that this door can only be opened if you take off the seat belt as a driver. So this car is not very friendly as far as a rideshare type of vehicle because you will literally need to take off your seatbelt, open this door, and then open that door for the passenger to be able to get out ultimately. One thing that I appreciate about this car that may be overlooked is this window. So you see this on previous cars as well, but this does increase visibility as a driver. If you're new to BMW, you may be excited to learn that these preset buttons are not only for music stations. You can actually set these for GPS destinations. So say you're dropping off your kid at school and then you gotta go to work and then you gotta come back home. So you can simply press those buttons and the GPS will automatically guide you to that destination. But that does leave you with fewer buttons for your music stations. Since these headrests are not adjustable, you're definitely gonna wanna sit in them to see how comfortable they are because once you get it, you're stuck with what it is. Underneath the center console is a hidden cigarette lighter adapter, which works great for charging your phone. 
I guess to save on weight, both the passenger and the driver's seat is adjustable only manually. There are no electric buttons anywhere for adjusting the seats. Even for a small car, visibility is pretty important to us. And it's cool that the design of the vehicle has a cutout here, a little notch that makes the window in the back or the rear windshield a little bit more open and visible to whatever's outside. Normally on the armrest here for other cars, you'll see a little compartment that doubles as a handle. Since this car doesn't have that, the handle for, op for closing the door or pulling it closed is gonna be here. So obviously this is the handle to open, but you'll grab this to shut. One thing this car does not have is the ability for the side mirror, or sorry, side visor to slide back. So some European cars, you push this and this whole thing slides over to cover this gap. Unfortunately, we don't have that here, nor do we have any sort of tab or anything that can cover this empty space. So if sun gets through there, then unfortunately it will get in your eyes. There's also a card holder up here. Although I don't use it because I have two car seats up here, these back seats, they do fold down obviously, but they can also move up one notch. And what that does is when the back seat isn't occupied by people, you have that much extra space here in the cargo. It may be negligible because I think it only moves forward one or two inches, but something uh, that is available on this car. This happened to me once when my 12 volt went out, but if for some reason, if your charge port door is not able to be opened or stuck, what we're gonna do is you're gonna open this back door here. And right here behind this foam piece, we're gonna pull this out. And here there's a pull cord and you're gonna pull that and that will manually release your door for the charge port. By the time your key fob runs out of batteries and the unlock and lock no longer function, it still has enough battery in here to start the car. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna physically put the key fob near this icon right here by the steering wheel of the key right there and that will help start the car. From what I've heard, not all i3s will have these three buttons on the rear view mirror. And these are the remote buttons for your garage doors. And this here uh, just lights up red when the car is armed or locked. There are seat warmers for both the driver and the passenger. And these are very effective. Even on low mode, the seat gets pretty hot fairly quickly. In the app where you can code the car, you can change the temperature at which each of these three settings are, are set at. There is a company that sells a cup holder cell phone mount, but I've elected to put one of these magnet ones on the vent itself. By putting it on the bottom part, it allows this to not move up and down so much. You may have noticed this band here by the cup holders in the front seat. This here looks in earlier models will be more of a netting material rather than a band. I wouldn't utilize this too much for anything that's heavy. Otherwise, if it does indeed slip through, you don't want this finding its way behind the brake pad and causing you issues. Over here on the driver's side, footwell is gonna be the button to release the gas tank door on the outside of the car, the hood, as well as the trunk. In the case that your hood doesn't open or your gas tank doesn't open, what you're gonna to have to do is pull this tab and inside here is gonna be an emergency release cord to manually release your hood. So you're gonna reach in there, you're gonna yank that like this. You'll hear a chime and then the hood will pop open on its own. And in there, in the engine bay is gonna be another cord, a green one on the passenger side that will allow you to release the gas tank door manually if you need to. So again, to release this, you're gonna to have to get to your hood and to get to your hood, if it's stuck, you're gonna to have to get to this. We're gonna talk about the coach doors or suicide doors for a moment. So it will be tight, there will be challenges. One thing that you may not have considered is rain. When it rains and you have to keep the front door open in order to open the rear door, particularly if you're trying to get kids out or a grandfather or grandparent or someone who is not as able-bodied or can't move as quickly, you're gonna have both doors, which I remind you are made of a fabric material, exposed to the rain. So as a car detailer, I can tell you that fabric can be wet, but you're not gonna wanna let it stay wet for too long. And you're not gonna really wanna allow it to dampen for an extended period of time, because that can lead to mold. So 
when it's raining, it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. You're gonna to have to have everyone ready to exit the vehicle as quickly as they can once the doors open. So if you have kids, that means they're unbuckled and in COVID, they're gonna be wearing their masks. They're gonna be wearing their jackets or hats or whatever else before you open the door. So that once you open the door, they can scoot out as quickly as possible to reduce exposure of your fabric doors to the rain. Okay, these suicide doors, they do pose a challenge. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. They do pose a challenge and we're gonna go over what those challenges are and how to go about doing it. There are also advantages of having suicide doors. And one advantage is that you don't have that B pillar. The B pillar is the pillar that's normally here. And so that, that allows you a lot of space actually to get in there. And when you're pulling the front seat forward, forward, <laughs> you can actually expose a lot more space to the people in the back. And when I'm getting out of the vehicle, when I'm getting out of the vehicle, then all I really need to do is turn around and open the door from that side. Normally with this traditional door setup, you have to go behind the back door so you can open in that leaf from that side and then get your kid or whatever. But the convenience of having everything so compact in this space really does help, at least for my usage as a family, as a primary family vehicle. Some of you might be wondering about car seats in the BMW i3. Yes, two car seats do fit in the back of the BMW i3 that are front facing. When I got this car, my son was rear facing. And when you have a rear facing car seat, it takes up more space as far as depth. And so I did have to put him behind the passenger seat because with a rear facing car seat behind the driver's seat, my seat was pushed almost to the front and there wasn't much space and it was fairly uncomfortable. If you're buying an i3 for a family vehicle, just know that you can foresee the future that your kids will be growing up and they won't necessarily be rear facing for too long. And so once they're front facing, then it works just fine. You will not be able to fit a convertible car seat in the vehicle. No, I'm wrong. You will be able to fit it in, but you're not gonna be able to remove the convertible car seat from the car when you're parked at a place like Safeway. You can imagine you pulled up to a Safeway parking lot and you're opening your front door. So you pull the door open, but you can't go too wide because there may be a car next to you. And then you're gonna reach over and you're gonna open this rear door. And again, you can't open that too far because you'll hit the car next to you. So this leaves this triangular gap for both you and your rear passenger. So this is how it works. You step out, you open that door, and you're gonna reach in for your child. And you can imagine a convertible car seat with you lugging it is not gonna be able to fit in this clearance space such that you can close this door, right? There's no clearance. I'm in a tiny little half triangle. The door closes, then you carry the convertible car seat and you bring it out, you turn around, and then you close this door. So from the outside, we're gonna show you a little bit about how little space you have. And that's gonna be like this. So that's the space you're gonna have for both you and your passenger. If your passenger needs to be, needs assistance from you, uh, taking them out. So what about getting the kids into the car when you have another car next to you? This is how that's gonna work. As you approach the car, you're gonna go ahead and open this door. Again, careful not to hit any cars that are next to you. And while you stand here, your child is gonna go in that little triangle, okay? And then you're gonna reach back here, open the door, and they are gonna climb into the seat on their own in there. Then you close the door and you're still standing out here and then you can get in the car and close the door. So you can imagine if you're not a small person or you have trouble physically carrying heavy things or moving into tight spaces, then getting a convertible car seat in and out of the car is not just difficult, but it's impossible for anyone of any size because there just simply isn't enough space. But do note that if you do need to use a convertible car seat, then surely your kid can sit in the seat and you can take the kid out. But in all practicality, you're gonna have to wake them up if you need to remove them from the car. So just for 
dinner or lunch or some sort of outing where in any other car normally you just take the convertible car seat out and they would still be asleep in this case you're not gonna be able to do that okay so that concludes the boot camp video of the interior of the car and that includes the boot camp all together our next videos will be about why you do want a bmw i3 and another video about reasons why you do not want one because i know it's attractive for some reasons and there's also reasons not to have it and we kind of want to weigh those back and forth to see if it's for you the bmw i3 i always talk about as not for everyone but it is for more people than who will admit so a lot of people don't look deep into enough uh, to be able to make those decisions comfortably for their own usage. But we're going to go over that again in another video. Hopefully this one helped you. And um, that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye.